So before I begin, I would like to share a quote from Father Richard Bowman. I understand some of you know who Father Bowman. Yeah, I see a smile over there. Uh, when I first came here a couple of years ago, I just really resonated with uh, his spirit. And this is kind of a retreat, and I presented this at a retreat, and this is a quote from Father Bowman. In all truth, retreat is something you do. Is letting God have room in your life, noticing Jesus, what draws you, and what you actually desire. So I invite you to do just that in this type of encounter, a brief meditation. There's going to be a reading I have here from Scripture, uh, from Mark 1, 29, 34. But uh, some wisdom in my years of biblical study in my life, understanding what comes before Scripture and to aid in our reflection, the gospel here wastes little time in its message of Jesus beginning his public ministry. After he calls the first four disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter, James, and John, he's taught in the synagogue. After completing his teaching, he rebukes a demon and casts out the unclean spirit from a man in their midst. Jesus is quickly becoming well-known well-known in the region. He has been invited to Simon Peter's house afterwards, and joining them are Andrew, James, and John. So I invite you to just sit comfortably and relax as I uh, read the scripture passage for you from Mark 1, through 34. And soon after departing from the synagogue, they went to the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But the mother-in-law of Simon lay ill with a fever, and at once they told him about her. And drawing near to her, he raised her up, taking her by the hand. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered to them. Then when the evening arrived, after the sun had set, they brought to him all who had maladies and those who had demons. And the entire city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were troubled with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. But he would not permit them to speak because they knew him. So again, I invite everyone to relax. Just sit back. I want you to close your eyes if you would so do. While hearing this following meditation that comes from the guided contemplation Meditations of the Gospels, the Heart of Jesus. This is a writing by Lawrence Keller, actually. Um, so I just want you to just listen, sit back and listen to the voice of the Spirit whispering to you as you encounter this meditation. As they enter Peter's house, Peter cannot wait to tell his mother-in-law about this morning's events. When he notices that the house is far too quiet and no one appears to be around, he looks at his wife, worried. His wife calls out her mother's name, but there is silence. Even in her old age, Peter's mother-in-law likes to keep busy and always does chores around the house. This morning, she told him that she was not feeling very well and would not be attending synagogue. However, she appeared fine. Peter's wife begins to wonder whether her mother might have fallen down the stairs or worse while they were away. She looks around, rushes up the stairs, into all the rooms while calling her. Peter asks Jesus, his brother, and his friends to stay in the dining room and follows his wife. They find her mother lying on her bed in a deplorable condition. She's sweating profusely and shivering. Peter's wife shouts to her mother, asking her to tell her what's wrong and what is happening to her. The mother tells them faintly that she is scared and holds her daughter's hands with dread in her eyes. Peter touches her and notices that her skin is hot and that she looks fragile. She appears to have a bad fever. 
Peter's wife feels despondent as she sees her mother in this state and is sure her mother will not survive. Jesus, James, John, and Andrew now appear at the doorway. Peter runs to Jesus and kneels in front of him with big eyes and a scared expression on his face. He explains the condition of his wife's mother and asks Jesus desperately to do something fast. Peter's wife beseeches Jesus to help them. Jesus' eyes are compassionate toward them and speaks to the fever, admonishing it. Immediately, her temperature drops and the fever <coughs> is gone. The mother now feels much better after feeling so defeated by the fever that she immediately gets up from the bed and stands with renewed vitality. She walks to Jesus, holds his hands, and gives him thanks. Peter's wife kneels down in front of Jesus and thanks him with tears in her eyes, her once restrained emotions now giving away. Jesus places his hands over her shoulders. Next, Peter gives Jesus a heartfelt hug, giving him thanks. Peter's wife then says, let's prepare the food and celebrate. Peter responds by saying that it's a great idea and he'll kill a sheep for the occasion. The weather is beautiful, so Peter's wife suggests they eat outside in the courtyard. Jesus and Peter take out the dining table. Peter's wife is preparing the lamb that Peter has just killed with vegetables and herbs and you can smell the aroma around the house. Her mother, joyous in her heart, brings cushions and sets the table, serving olives and some fresh bread that she has just taken out of the oven. The town is quiet today, except for the sheep. You can barely hear a sound outside, apart from the odd passers-by and the chatter. There is a small breeze. John is pondering Jesus' astonishing power and authority of his words. He wonders how easy it would be for Jesus to defeat the Romans and bring God's kingdom and restoration to Israel. He anticipated the Messiah to be a warrior like David, but Jesus also has powers that surpass the extraordinary powers of prophets like Moses and Elijah. They sit down for the meal, Peter's wife is a wonderful cook, and they thoroughly enjoy the lamb after such a long day. The peace, intimacy, and joy of this meal is felt, and the conversation is animated. They spend the afternoon together honoring the day of rest. When the sun starts to set, someone is already knocking on the front door. Peter looks at Jesus. They should not be expecting anything. Jesus reminds him that this morning outside the synagogue, he told several people they could come to him for healing. Peter rolls his eyes. He was hoping to have an early night in. He goes to open the door and sees there isn't just one or two people. There are many outside, and they are saying they have come to see Jesus, asking whether he might be there. Peter says that he is. He turns around to call Jesus when he sees that he's already walking towards the door. Jesus greets the people with a smile. They say, Lord, do you remember we spoke, spoke this morning? Jesus responds affirmatively. They ask him to please help them. Some with sorrow in their eyes and hopeful expectancy. Jesus calmly lays hands on the first person to be healed, and they are completely they look at themselves in astonishment and shout for joy with friends and family who came with them. They give thanks to Jesus. The onlookers are amazed giving glory to God, and some tell others, did I not tell you? Some passersby stop to see what the commotion is about, including locals, merchant travelers, Roman soldiers. Peter, John, James, and Andrew are greatly amazed at Jesus' infinite power and his heartfelt generosity towards all without taking notice of the passing time. As a crowd gathers and increases, some push to the front to be the first to be healed. 
Some people humbly and appreciatively give thanks to Jesus warmly. <coughs> However, others begin to celebrate their healing without a word to Jesus, either leaving straight after without giving thanks or just mingling to curiously look at what would happen to the others. Jesus heals them all, the good, the bad, the meek, the aggressive, the thankful, and the ungrateful. Jesus keeps this in his heart. Jesus' heart warms with the kind and hurts with the callous. Some people wonder if Jesus is tired when we retreat back into the house and risk, be, that risk this being healed. But Jesus stays until everyone who has come is healed. Every one of them. <coughs> and this warm night, under a starry <coughs> sky, some look up to the heavens to comprehend the immensity of God's power through this gentle and patient young man. Jesus does not seem to be in a hurry as everyone experiences his healing. If you have a personal encounter with him, an encounter that will change their lives forever, they are touched by his peaceful manner, the look in his eyes, the carrying their sorrow and understanding. His compassion and selfless love, his power bringing to them peace, healing, joy, forgiveness, mercy, and the love of God. Finally, a lame man asked Jesus, Lord, do you think I'm worthy to be healed? Have mercy on me. Do you think God loves me enough to heal me? Jesus calls him by name, lays his hands on him, and the man is completely healed. The healed man looks down at his feet and falls to his knees, holding and thanking Jesus and saying, Lord, you are a prophet from God, and now I know that God loves me as tears roll down his cheeks. Jesus smiles at him and tells him that God has always loved him, even before he was born, and tells him to go in peace. A few minutes later, Peter looks around to find there's no one left. Some people are still walking away. Some of the houses are lit by oil lamps shining through the windows. In the sky, the stars are shining. John tells Jesus that he must be exhausted. They certainly are. And that they should keep going. Jesus says he will sleep out on the terrace, and he has given some blankets and cushions. Jesus lies on his makeshift bed looking at the stars in heaven. He thanks the Father for working through him to heal the bodies and souls of every person who met him today. He thanks him for enabling him to give glory to his name, but is sorrowful for witnessing so much pain as he prays exhausted, he falls asleep. May uh, open your eyes for a brief moment. Quite incarnational of a God who comes near us to speak and touch our lives. From Robert's presentation last week of the incarnation, right? I've been praying the scripture quite a while, would you say? Asking Jesus to be in my everyday life. At my home. In my neighborhood. He has drawn my awareness to so many things. Too numerous and rich to mention for this time that we have here today. But I'm gonna share what God has shown me most important at this time. I've been experiencing healing. Coming very real to me in this community where previously prior to coming to Bellarmine, I was quite isolated. Recovering from a dark night of a soul experience. 
of a previous faith life that I had left behind and walked away from. I feel God called me to this new geography and this community of real faith being shared and lived out. In first century Palestine, healing from disease meant more than just healing. And if you're at Mass this morning, I think Father Damien picked up and shared that with us. <coughs> to be healed is to be a community. To be unhealed is to be separated from community. He healed them and restored them to his community. I've experienced God's empowerment guiding me in my own mother-in-law's healing. Mother-in-law, 40 years, who just had to say goodbye to her husband of 62. We just celebrated his birthday. And because of that healing, he's still with us today. God has shown me clients, sales reps, architects, designers, co-workers, doctors, nurses, caretakers, delivery drivers, table waiters, food preparers, grocery clerks, family, and so forth. who in some way or another needed a healing ear, a prayer, or a blessing spoken into their life to touch them and to guide them closer to God. The way God's done it to me or you. Jesus demonstrates his heartfelt compassion for all people that pours out from himself in his relationship to God. Jesus' works of healing creates restoration to turn towards God. He sought all occasions to speak of the good news and bring healing. Like I said again, quite incarnational of a God who comes near us to speak and touch our lives. So I'm gonna lead you back into the prompts. And then after we read these prompts, you gather together with three or four or five or two, or however you want to do that, um, and maybe share afterwards. But right now, we come to this time to invite you to come away and listen to careful reflect, reflection of God's voice to you. What is pressing into your heart and life through this moment related to this scripture and meditation? Perhaps you may want to express to God or journal your own longings for healing related to this moment. Maybe you want to thank God in recalling a moment of welcoming or being welcomed by God or another person. Some of you may want to take this moment to pray silently for anyone God brings to your mind who's been ostracized by society, neglected, shunned. Perhaps you may want to silently name another prompt another shimmering moment, another invitation that has come to your awareness. So now I turn to you as you journal this, and then we'll take a moment to do that, and then you can get together with one another. We'll talk to you there. Okay. 